as the global aviation industry continues to mount its comeback. This movement has also coincided with the attempts of many of the countries around the world to jumpstart their respective economies. Also, some countries are assessing their handling of the crisis in their respective countries, with some with a varying degree of success. Despite the worries around the ongoing COVID-19 virus still out and around in our world, there has been discussions in Asia and other parts of the world regarding attempts to jumpstart economies and to jumpstart global international travel, which for the most part has been heavily affected by international travel restrictions and lockdowns that have ensued during the past few months. Among the ideas that have been discussed is the idea of travel bubbles, which I will discuss in this video. At present, most of the world's airlines are currently relying on domestic routes as well as international cargo flights. While this can provide a strong base for some airlines, countries and airlines are looking for opportunities to help resume trade and commerce amongst countries, which international air travel would be a great help. Now, with some countries sensing that they have contained the spread of the virus, some of them are looking for ways to open up pathways or travel bubbles between themselves and other countries that, by consensus and amongst international health officials, are deemed as low risk regarding the spread of the virus. So with that in mind, this brings up the discussions and plans of the reciprocal travel agreements or travel bubbles based on agreements between two or more countries with varying levels of testing and quarantine methods along with other immigration regulations and travel protocols that travelers will and airlines will have to abide by. In some cases, some of these travel bubbles will allow for open access for citizens of each country in the agreement or would be limited to certain kinds of travelers such as foreign citizens living in the country or business folks who are frequently traveling to and from the country. Moving along, we've seen some examples of this sprouting around throughout the world, the first with the Baltic states in Europe, Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia establishing free access for citizens of each country to visit the other countries respectively. More recently, another prime example of this has been between Malaysia and Singapore with the reciprocal green lane for essential travel and business purposes. Then there's the case of India, which while there are no regularly scheduled commercial flights going abroad as of yet, the Indian government has been signing agreements with some countries such as the US, France, Germany, and United Kingdom for certain access for flight services specifically for repatriation purposes. Along with this, according to recent reports, the Indian government is currently still negotiating with other countries to open access to allow for more repatriation flights. And then there are those that are being planned, such as the case of the Australian-New Zealand Trans-Tasman travel bubble which has been proposed during the summer. Another planned travel bubble is involving the country of Japan, which while it bans the entry of citizens of 111 countries, the Tokyo-based government has been reportedly been in talks with some Southeast Asian nations like Thailand and Vietnam as well as Australia and New Zealand to form their own travel bubbles. This is also not to mention that Japan also has been looking to reopen entry for business folks who will be subject to certain rules in including not being allowed to use public transport and take a PCR test both before the trip and upon arrival in Japan. These are just some examples of travel bubbles that are being planned or currently active. And given the fluid situation of the ongoing situation, we could be seeing some active and in some cases suspended rapidly due to rising reported cases at one or several countries within the travel bubble. As a tactic, it is a good way to promote commerce and tourism between certain countries, especially those who have been seen to contain the spread of the virus in their respective countries. It also provides a balance between health regulations and jumpstarting global trade and business. However, with the fluid situation that we are seeing right now, cases could spike in certain countries, and this could be the case in any country that so far has been deemed as safe. A prime example of this has been Thailand, which has shelved its own plans or travel bubbles recently. Along the same lines, the Trans-Tasman travel bubble has been shelved for the time being given the rising cases in both Australia and New Zealand. These kind of rapid changes could bring havoc on travelers as well as airlines plans. As while the airlines could handle constant change, it may not be able to handle certain rapid changes of flight schedules, which would result in more workload, specifically rebooking travelers or providing refunds, a burden that not many of the airlines who are experiencing financial troubles want to deal with already. I personally do believe that this is a short-term solution, but long-term, this is probably not economically viable, especially for budget airlines which do require large load factors, or airlines who don't have that big of a domestic market and rely heavily on international air travel. That's very much my short take on travel bubbles. 
I'm aware of certain other travel bubbles, but I probably missed it. So feel free to share the information of how it works for your respective country. Also, I would love to hear your take on the whole overall idea of travel bubbles and will this be an effective way of the future or as I believe is rather a short term solution. Feel free to leave your take. In the meantime, I definitely hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Once again, this has been Flights in Asia. Thank you for watching and have a great day.